guys, this is Abla here, and I'm bringing you the return of Road to Render. I have been quite inactive with this for like a few weeks, and I'm sorry about that. And I forgot that people actually kind of wanted to see this because I've still been getting quite a lot of views on my first three videos. So I thought I'd continue from the last one, which was uh, motion tracking, and I didn't really go very far with the Cinema 4D part. And I'm sorry for those who wanted like to start on the AE stuff, uh, After Effects stuff, but I thought I'd carry on with the uh, motion tracking because I did get a lot of requests from people about Cinema 4D. Um, and you can do some really cool stuff and it's really simple to do. Um, so before I start on this tutorial, uh, I'll put a little annotation of what time you can skip to if you want to miss out the update part um, for the tutorial. I think it'll be like, it'll don't take me quickly to show you, but I've obviously been working on quite a lot of entries because I like doing mini edits. So first of all is my Zim entry, which I've been doing and you guys like that a lot. So I also noticed that Mink was doing a editing contest and that's like, I love, Mink is probably my favourite editor. I'd say like he has the best style. Um, and I wanted to do that. So I'm also doing that. So I may not be like as active with edits as such, but I might try and do some more like road to renders and other stuff. Um, and I'll give you a quick preview of that now, if you do want to see, uh, which is here. I've only done one clip, and I've sort of I haven't really done it properly. I've only just started it, but I thought I'd show you anyway. So, listen up. I'll turn it up a little bit. So yeah. It's a pretty epic drum and bass song, sort of dancey drum and bass. Um, I really liked it, and I thought it goed well with like sort of a good, clean edit. Um, and I'm also going to Cornwall for a week, uh, surfing. So I won't, may not be active for a week. I might see what I can do. I might upload like an in real life surfing video if I can do it. But most likely being active for a week. So I'll be back next Sunday, and I'll be uploading as normal again. So if I, that's my explanation, if I'm inactive. But I am doing this video before I go away. So, let's get straight into it. You want to open up Cinema 4D, because this is like more in-depth side of this. And I thought what I'd do is I'll show you how to do the text on... I do quite often. And I think I know a lot of people struggle with making a nice textured text. Uh, like this here. Like a sort of a little bit broken texture. Uh, um, but like it also looks clean at the same time. It actually probably looks better there if I actually put it in 720p. Um, it's just sort of nice, really. And alongside with how to do a nice textured, textured text and how to get the reflections right and the shadowing right, and I'll also show you how to do logos like the Synergy one there and the Flatline Editing one there and the Freestyle Replay one. And I'll be putting those in the description. So if you check out the description, there is all sorts of links and stuff to videos and downloads and oh, and everything for you guys to enjoy. So, first of all, I'm going to be using a cinematic from my motion track giveaway. Uh, that will also be in the description. And this is... I think this is probably one of my better giveaways because... They're all pretty good motion tracks on, I think I did five maps on every Call of Duty, well not every Call of Duty, all the used ones I would say, no Black Ops, no Quad 5, but all the good ones. Um, I did five on each, so I'm going to use the underground one, because it's pretty good. Oh, wrong, oh, crap, I did not mean to open that. Um, try it again. Yeah, so open up the Cinema 4D file, uh, if you want to know how like to use the pack, I did a, uh, I did a video of it as well. Um, I this didn't actually come with a pack. I did this myself, but it doesn't really make a difference. All I've done is I've added the light, which if I zoom out is like there. It's only one light, self shadowing, like a little bit above, and I've just imported materials, which I will also put a link to in the description. Um, so yeah, all I've done is I've just made it like a normal motion track. I've imported that in the motion track. Frames and I've added, I've like imported my materials, added my plane, added my background, added my light, and that's it. So, 
First of all, how to get the nice textured text. So you're going to go to MoGraph, Mo Text, and that straight away gives you an easy text to do. And I'm going to use my my usual font, which people have stolen off me. Um, it's been now quite a popular font, I think. I'm pretty sure I was the first one to use it. Or well, my claim that is, I did was the first person to use it, but people may agree. But I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, it's called Lobster 1.4, and I think it looks pretty sick. But yeah, as I said, again, in the description, it's links to, I'll put a download link to like some of my favourite texts, and obviously to font.com, whatever. It's going to be full of links, the description is going to be huge. <laughs> uh, right, so there is your text, and if I quickly pre-render, you can just see, it's just some plain text, which is kind of boring. So, right. What we want to do first is add a material, so you're going to want to make an inside and outside material, because you're going to be using a plugin called Throusy, which basically breaks up your object into bits, as it were. So you're going to need an inside and outside material. So for the inside material, I'm going to use this black, which is like a shiny black. It's nice, shiny. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to use this white, which is like my favorite material. Uh, I don't know if you can see like the, there's like a, a texture to it and everything. It looks really cool. But yeah. The main problem, if you look right now, you can see it, is this line across right here. Oh, crap. Here, all the way across the text, you can see it's a line and also a cut off point. And I really hate that. I think it makes it look ugly on the motion track. So, the way I found of getting rid of it is by making a textured text. So, first of all, you don't want to select your text. You know what? I want to pause the video now, by the way, because this is the part where you need Throusy. So, if you haven't got Throusy, I'll put a link to a tutorial by, I don't know, I know, I'll just put a link to the website and then you can install it, because I'm pretty sure the website tells you how to install it, and you just download it, basically it's like 15 megabyte and you install it and it gives you the plugin, that's really simple to use. Um, so yeah, now you're going to need Frousy, so you want to hit C on the keyboard when you're selecting your text, this breaks it into separate parts as you can see, we've got the R and the T and the R, and then you're going to select it again, and then press select children, and then C, and then you want to go to edit, select children again, and then go to objects, connect and delete. And this has basically made it into one object, which means that it's no longer editable. So you can't change it, you can move it about and stuff, but you can't actually change what the, it is. Like you can change the letters or anything, it's just an object. Uh, you can still change materials at this point if you want to change materials, but that's it. So now, once you've decided how you want your text, um, you go to Plugins, Throusy, um, and you might have a newer version or anything, but I'm pretty sure it's still the same. And all you want to do is change your pieces to 20, and then just hit Break Now. And all it does is it breaks up each individual letter into bits. Now, this might take longer depending if you've got, like, Abla Presents, which is obviously more than the three letters that I've got here. If I quickly show you this, you see it gives you that sort of broken textured look. I think it looks really cool, especially when you put a colour correction on it. It can look really nice. So, I'm going to hit these arrows here, because they're at the moment that crosses. And I'm going to delete these blue movie bits. <laughs> uh, now you're going to want to get a MoGraph, Fracture, and then you're just going to put all the pieces into one Fracture, so it's just one object again. So just want to open up these MoTeX. Obviously, 1 to 20, hold down shift, select all of them, and then, then just drag them into the fracture. So 1, hold down shift, 20, and just drag it into the fracture. And do just repeat it on every... Your, it does one of these for each letter, so if you have lots of letters, it will take you a bit longer than it's taken me. But that's basically what you need to do. And now you can delete this, and then you have one object again. And you can move this about and do whatever you want to it. Now... You can probably just leave it as that, really. I mean, if I was to show you there, you'd see it just looks like the text I had in the video. But to go further um, and sort of add some movement to it, you want to click the fracture, hold down shift, and click the last piece. Then you want to go to MoGraph, Effectors, and Random. Now this, you can see, it breaks up all the pieces randomly. And if I was to and preview that, it looks all a bit crazy and kind of cool. And this can be used to great effect, like for loads of different things. 
Um, I'm just going to quickly change the parameters. Like, if you were to have it huge, you could just have it completely off, and then it could fly in to make the piece. I'm just going to have mine little because I'm only going to change it very slightly. So, I'm put like 24, 12, and maybe minus 19. Just random numbers. And again, I'd say the same for rotation. You can do scale, but I think it looks like shitty, really, to be honest. Um, so, yeah. There you go. So, I'm just changing everything about a little bit. <laughs> That's random numbers. Um, and then all you do is you play with this strength bar here. And obviously if it has zero strength, it's back to normal. And then it's got more broken up. Like that. Um, so obviously I usually have mine on about one or two. And then I just leave it like that. If I show you, it looks kind of like broken and distorted. But if you were to like keyframe it. So if I was to go back from the beginning and then like have it as broken as it is there. And then on the strength, I'm just going to hold down control and hit it so it turns red which means it made a keyframe and I'm going to go to the end and I'm just going to turn the strength down to zero and I'm going to hold down control again and hit the thing so it's gone red it's keyframed it there so you can see it's just made a progression from that to that so that's the text part now I'm going to show you how to do logos so obviously you can develop that more by the way I'm just going to leave it at that, but there's one basic effect of it, so uh, I think it looks kind of cool. So, to the logos, very easy to do. Um, all you have to do is have Photoshop, and if you don't have Photoshop, I'll put again in the description a link to some files to enable you to do this. But all you need is a logo, so I'm going to use the phase logo, which is a video, but it imports it into the new Photoshop. I'm not sure about the old one. And then all you do is you use this pen tool and you just go around your shape. I'm not going to go around it completely, but that's basically what you do with a mask tool. You don't then leave it as that once you've connected it up. Go to File, Export, and Path to Illustrator. Leave it as Work Path, and then you can call it what you like. And it makes an Adobe Illustrator file. And this file can be read with Cinema 4D, fortunately. So all you do is you press Open, or Shortcut to Open. Um, and then I'll find where I've saved my preset ones I've done. I'm going to put an Apple logo in because I'm an Apple fanboy. <laughs> uh, so there you can see I've got my Apple logo. This one actually has two paths because obviously it's two different shapes. So all you do is you make you mask one bit, connect it, and mask the other bit and connect it. And then when you export it, it exports it as two. So I'll just connect and delete. So I'll just make one path there. And all I'm going to do is press Control c exit this. No, I don't want to save. Click it, Control V, and I've imported my path into this now current folder. And I want to get coordinates and just make it so it's actually in the shot, like that. And there is my Apple logo. Um, to make it 3D, what you're going to want to do is go to Extrude Nerves, which is under this green square, and just drag the path onto that Extrude Nerves, and it makes it 3D. Uh, you probably also want to make it smaller, so to make it in scale, you're going to want to go to this little square here by the arrows, hit it, and then you're just going to want to drag it down. So I'm going to make it like 0 0.4, 0. Yeah, 0 0.4. Remember the number because you want to do the exact same to the other side so it stays in scale. So 0 0.4 again. I think I might have been a little bit out, but it's, it'll be roughly right so you can see. I'll probably have to make it a little bit smaller. So again, I'm going to make it like 0 0.5 this time. And then obviously do the same to the other side so it stays in scale. This is just like up to you and how big you want it. Um, unfortunately, it's the only way to change it. So there is your Apple logo. And it's just the same as any other logo. You can literally just, all you want to do is select it, press uh, C on the keyboard, select children, connect and delete, and there is your object again. And then you can add your materials. So if I add materials again, find it, materials, and then I can do that, and then it has the material. I can apply Throwsy to it, I can do anything. And that's how you do your logos in your motion track. So obviously, it's very easy. As I said before, links are in the description to everything I mentioned, and they'll be titled or whatever. And uh, some videos you may want to see are my Sima edit and also my Tadar edit so they're two of my favourite edits at the moment both sort of smooth 
uh, clean drum and bass edits. So go check those out if you haven't already. Give them a like and comment. And please like and comment this video for me helping you out, I suppose. And if you want to see more of these. And I think the next one I'll actually do something in After Effects. Like I'll show you how to do the camera wiggle and um, probably how to like almost arrange your After Effects and then maybe put the first clip in and like timings and stuff. So yeah, I'll see you guys in a bit. Please like and comment again and I'll see you later. Peace.